What's going on guys, it's not spring is my updated Magic EDK build for Greymore. Now, once again, as I said in my last video, shout out to Zavis for this build. The main setup that I use is from him, so links to him will be down below. Definitely give him credit on it. I will go through multiple setups and everything like that, so this might be a little bit longer than my usual build videos, but I'm going to try and keep it short and sweet as possible. So, going into the character sheets, we have almost 38k mag, 28k health, 17.5k stam. See the rest of the numbers there for yourself. I am not running any stragglers at all, so if you would want to bump your stats up, like health-wise, stam-wise, you could definitely go three triglyphs. Honestly, I would try that out if you're learning mag decay, or if you just want more stam and health, it's really up to you. Max magic isn't going to make or break anything. I was just trying out a little bit more mag, and I've been playing with more mag recently. So it's not a big difference to me either way personally, but you could go three triglyphs if you wanted to. Everything is in the magica. I'm a dark elf. I would stay Dark Elf this patch. I could see people wanting to go Bredden for Vampire, but me personally, the Dark Elf passives with more Stam, the spell damage, flame resistance, burning immunity, everything like that, it makes Dark Elf a very big pick for Mag DK. So I would stick with Dark Elf personally. I'm using the Atro. This is just getting our sustain to a bare minimum. If you don't need the Atro, by all means, either go with the Mage or the Apprentice, it's up to you, but go with one of those. Food-wise, we're using Bewitched, and Vampire, we are stage 3 currently for Undeath. I would do 2 or 3, it's really up to you. 2 gives you the Misform passive, when you come on a Mist you get Spell Damage, and 3 gives you Undeath, so it's really up to you which one you want to go with. Obviously, if you go with 3, you're going to have a pretty hefty cost increase, everything like that, taking more Flame Damage. So, it's really up to you if you want to do this, you could, by all means, just stay stage 1, and... You could go up through them as you learn Mag DK if you're newer or anything like that, but this is what I'm playing with. Going into the gear, we have Overwhelming on the front bar. So we have this on a staff, one body piece, and then two jewelry pieces. Unfortunately, I do not have an Inferno to test it, so I've been using Lightnings and Ice Staffs, which they've been fine. Ice Staff gives you a little bit more resistance, and the weaving is a little bit better than a Lightning Staff, in my opinion. Just it's just a weird thing for me personally. Lightning Staff is going to buff some of your abilities though, like your proc sets, talons, leap, everything like that, your AoE abilities. That Lightning Staff is going to buff that, but it's purely up to you which one you want to go with. Honestly, any of the three would not be particularly bad for this build, so whichever one you can get your hands on and whichever one you feel really comfortable with. Um, regardless of which staff you go with though, you're definitely going to want to go with Charge and Disease Glyph. It's just too powerful, you're going to apply burning all the time with charged, and disease gives the minor defile, which defile was already very strong last patch, and it's even more powerful now, because healing is a lot less with the healing nerf, so you're definitely going to want to go charged, diseased, I'm pretty sure it's something you're going to see on every mag DK build, period, across the board, I've already watched a few for this patch, and they've all been running this, so it seems that everybody's been catching on. Back bar, we're using Crest. So we have this on the sword and board and body pieces to fill out the five piece. On the one hand, I have Berserker Glyph with Decisive. Definitely go Decisive to pump ulti very quickly. We use Decisive with Heroism Pots since we don't have Blood Spawn or anything like that anymore. So we're pumping out ultis very, very quick, even with no Blood Spawn, just because of Decisive and Heroism Pots. If you wanted to go for another trait here, you could go Powered or Nurnhone, something like that. But honestly, I think Decisive is just way better than anything else. I've seen some testing, and I've done testing myself on powered back bar, and I, I really haven't seen a massive difference for it to warrant you changing the trait, but it's purely up to you what you want to do there. Staff, Maglyph, as I said, Maglyphs across all the body, and we have Sturdy on four of the pieces, that's including the shield and Impen on the other four pieces. So Sturdy Shield, getting into the body, we're using Groththar on our monster set. Now, you could swap this out for another proc monster set, but I would definitely go with a damage monster set, for sure. Grothar fits very well with Overwhelming, because there's both AoE proc sets that do damage, and they do good damage at that. So when you look at this, it does 2500 damage, we have Overwhelming, which is going to do about 1400 damage, and then our last piece on our uh, build is definitely going to buff them quite a bit. So, they're very, very strong. When you get on top of people, you lay your dots on people, you start pressuring them, it makes it very hard for them to overcome these sets, and it makes mag the kid pressure very good. So, Grothar, in my opinion, could put something else here if you want, but that's my choice. Now, last but not least, 
is the Malkath Band. Now, I'm sure everybody already guessed it in my last video where I had the uh, 2VX. Everybody was like, oh, you're wearing Grotho, overwhelming Malakath. Everybody guessed it outright because it doesn't take too long to be like, oh, he's not critting at all. So, yeah, the Malakath band for sure increases your damage done by 25%. You cannot deal crit damage. The big thing, in case anybody missed it, is we have 19% crit on our front bar. I'm in heavy armor. I do not have any crit buffs. I like playing heavy armor. This is the way I like playing. So, by all means, this makes a lot more sense than, you know, building for crit. Mag Decay doesn't get any crit bonuses from the class, anything like that. And being in heavy armor, my crit is going to be super low. So, at that point, you might as well go with this. Likewise, this is going to buff all your damage across the board. So, this buffs your proc sets. This buffs all your damage abilities, everything like that. So, this by far is going to be the most damage you can get on a heavy armor Mag Decay by a good bit. But on all the jewelry, we have reduced cost glyphs. Definitely need them for sustain. You do not need to go spell damage or anything like that. Regen on a mag decay is not the way to go. Definitely reduce cost by far. One last look at the gear. Like I said, we have three sturdy on the body and then the shield on the back bar. And then we have four impen on the other pieces and all mag glyphs. But you could go with triglyphs. Now, for other sets wise, if you do not want to go proc sets, you could go stuns. I would go stuns over overwhelming. If you don't know what this is, it gives weapon spell damage, pen, weapon spell damage, and then for the five piece, whenever you set somebody off balance, you get basically 5,300 pen when it's gold. Now, obviously that's a lot of pen. That's almost 7,000 pen, and you're going to proc that every time you deal damage to somebody who is off balance. You don't even have to set them off balance. Say you're playing with a bunch of stand boys that are using D-Swing, and they're just Spamming D-Swing on people, all you have to do is hit those people and you get this pen for 10 seconds. So, very, very strong. Likewise, we have Whip, which sets people off balance, everything like that. So, you can practice yourself very reliably. And for the monster set, I don't have it on me, I don't think. No, I do not. For the monster set, though, if you wanted to go with a damage monster set, like spell damage and weapon damage, rather than Grothar, I would go with Balor's for sure. And Balor's combined with stuns would give you a ton of spell damage and you would do... A lot more, you know, just normal damage, for lack of better words, rather than proc damage. It's really up to you. In this patch, you can either go procs, you can go high damage. It's really up to you. You don't have to go one way or another, and both will be able to compete each other, compete against each other, rather, very well. Grothar Overwhelming is very powerful of procs, but if you want to go stuns and battle orgs, you're going to have a lot more spell damage, and your base abilities are just going to hit harder. So, like I said, either or. Going into the skills, pretty normal. I'll give you guys some options, but it's pretty set in stone. A lot of DKs use this bar stuff, everything like that. So, Flame Lash, Fossilize, Degen, Ellie Drain, Burning Talons. I'm using Leap. You could use other ulties. Leap doesn't hit super hard. I'm using it just because it's cheap, it's a CC, and it does good damage with the Malakath Band. So, that's why I'm using it. You could use Meteor, you could use Banner. Banner does cost a little bit though because of Vampire, as you guys can see, 243. So it's really up to you what you want to go with there. Going on the back bar, this is the one free slot you guys could switch around. I have Fragmented Shield. People are going to be like, why the hell are you running that? Well, I'm running it because I can already kill people with everything else on my bar, and there's nothing else I really want to put here. So this is essentially my free slot, and I honestly put it here. A lot of people don't pay attention to passives anymore on DK, but the big thing is helping hands from Earth and Art. So whenever you cast a non-stamina costing ability, you get almost 1k stand back. Well, obviously, this is an Earth and Heart ability. So, say you're running low on stamina, you can just Fragmented Shield, Fragmented Shield, and just get stand back. You can just trade your mag for your stamp, and our mag sustain is very good. So, I use it for that, I also use it for the major mending, obviously, which is very valuable this patch, but I'm not spam casting this. This used to be something that, you know, Mag DK used to keep up all the time, 100%, keep that major mending up, everything like that. We're not keeping it up like that whatsoever, we're just using this in pinch situations, so say I'm literally about to die, and I can get this off, I get it off, I start healing with my other healing abilities, like Dragon's Blood and Colorize, and then that's that. I'm not using this all the time. I'm not buffing with this all the time. It's a very specific use ability, to put it that way. Besides that, you could put a dot here. I would go with Burning Embers back here, but besides that, 
there's nothing really else I would put here. There's nothing else I want. I don't find anything else useful. Like I said, I would just go with damage ability here, but that's really it. So Koag, I already talked about that. Elusive Mist, your snare removal, kite ability, everything like that. Cauterize, I already talked about it. You could go Flames of Oblivion. I know a lot of people are switching over to that because Cauterize, the heal on it isn't too crazy, but the big thing is it is, it's one of those abilities that just helps you. Just a little bit is, it goes a lot farther than you think. Because we can be pretty tanky on this build, especially when you just hold block. So having this little heal go off every once in a while, especially a heal that you don't have to worry about. You just buff with it and it heals you every 5 seconds. That is very nice, it's very powerful. So I mean, even though it doesn't heal a ton, I find it valuable still. If you don't want to run it though, by all means go with Flames of Oblivion. It's a ton of damage, a lot of pressure. And then Volatile, another dot, armor buff of course. I use Temporal Guard, I've seen a lot of mag decays using the Sword and Board ulti, which is the only other thing I would go back here, but it's really up to you. I'm trying to play this a little bit more on the tanky side, likewise I have a bit more in the sturdy than most people, I've seen people are still running more in pen, everything like that. With the amount of sturdy I have, with the amount of CP I have in the block cost reduction, Sword and Board, blocking really doesn't cost me anything. So. In that case, I really don't find the Sword and Bordal very valuable because what happens when I pop a Sword and Bordal is I end up having to just spam heal myself anyways. So I'd rather have Undo on my bar, just take a little bit less damage, and then Mist away and everything like that. I'd rather Mist than use an ulti, basically, is what I'm saying. So going into CP to finish this out, try and keep this part short and sweet. One Siphoner, 51 Warlord, 2 Bashing Focus. 32 Arcanist, we're not putting a ton in here because we don't have a ton of regen, but just to bump it up a little bit. 43 Befoul, Disease Glyph, you gotta put these points in there. I'm, I'm sure people are gonna comment and be like, oh my god, you showed them Befoul CP. Yeah, I'm showing you Befoul CP. I already showed off a proc build. Uh, it's not a secret anymore. Stuff like this, people are gonna be like, oh, that's cheesy, everything like that. This is what everybody's running. It's not like a scary build. It's not... A super cheesy build that only a couple people are running. It's basically either people are full sending damage or they're full sending procs. It's one way or another, so you pick your poison whether you want to do this or not. I'm just saying this is what I'm running, this is what a lot of people are going to be running that you're going to run into, so it's just, you know, what this patch is. 40 Tumbling, 81 Shadow Ward, 43 Blessed. I don't have any in Elfborn. People are going to be like, why don't you have any in Elfborn? Well, my healing, like I said, is fine. I really don't have a problem with healing whatsoever. My heals are very, very strong. And likewise, I'm using Malkath Band, so I can't do crit damage, and my crit rate is very low as is. So I find it valuable to just put those points elsewhere. Previously, I wasn't running any points in the Blessed. I was running these all in the Elfborn, so I literally just took them out of Elfborn and put them in the Blessed to get more base healing. 43 into LA Expert, 48 Spell Erosion. 61 Mastered Arms for direct damage, and 75 Thom to get Exploiter, and to buff our dots, because we do have quite a few dots. And yeah guys, that's about it for the build video. I have plenty more builds coming out this patch, I've already tested a lot. That's why I haven't been posting the past few days, I've basically been getting these ready, trying out different characters, and seeing what I want to do first, and where I want to go next. So, hopefully you guys enjoyed the video, as always, thanks to my supporters, links are down below, join button, Patreon, everything like that. I love you guys, and I'm out.